there were times I've failed miserably, but again, I have to understand and teach myself that it's a process. And each time you fail, be grateful that you are able to even identify your failure. Once you're able to identify your failure, it opens the doors to a lot more solutions for you to find. And that has always been my lifestyle. So being in the industry for 15 years officially, and um, how has the industry grown or improved over the years? Are we doing better? Are we, do we have a lot of improvement to do? And um, I would say it's a 50-50 a affair in the sense that internet or modern technology has helped the showbiz space to reach out to audience with the power of just the internet yeah. or data. Very powerful too. And social media has even made it more easier for us to do everything. Like you and I on a Zoom conversation mm -hmm. right now. In when different you post parts it on of YouTube. the world. Yeah. Yes, when you post it on YouTube, somebody in China or Belize or Sao Tome or Uruguay or Afghanistan will just watch this and get educated. Yes. So I, I think the advent of uh, technology and social media has helped our showbiz space but what hasn't actually helped us is too we don't have proper documentation and national archive of past events so it has That's always right. been a difficulty yes if you want to trace the history of Ghanaian high life now there's no one-stop shop you can go online or even in real life and say, okay, I'm going to a library to read about Ghana's music journey. We don't have that. And it's a major really problem. Sad. Yes. Yes. It's a major problem. Unlike Europe or USA where they try and properly document these things, yeah. you can easily have access to whether paid or free, you can have access to them and get more knowledge but we don't have that we don't have another that. major yes another major problem is the issue of copyrights first i'm sure you knew i used to post some of my poems my short stories on facebook but i've mm -hmm. stopped that mm -hmm. i don't post them anymore because there are people who have plagiarized my works copy my works and posted on other platforms using it for whatever reason so i've taken the ones that i was i was able to take down i've taken them down and stop posting the rest on, on, on my social media platform unless they are copyrighted in a way that I know can pay me back or give me credit as the originator of my, my, my creative works. So the issue of copyright in Ghana has been a problem. My book, I registered here in Ghana, but when I check from the global system, it's not there. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't tally with what happens on a global stage. I had my, I bought my ISBN, which is the International Standard Book Number. Yeah. When I logged online to check from the system, it was not, it was not available. It makes no sense. So but I had to register. to the international market because you're, thank you. You're thank more you. like local. As if they the check copyright, you, yes. You are the not online, so you're not real. Yes. Yes. The copyright that I paid for locally here doesn't make sense globally. It's not in the system. So I had to get a new copyright, get a new ISBN before I was able to, you know, authenticate everything as the originator of my own creative work. And it's the same with the music, with the music too. When you log your music in the, in the system locally here, it doesn't reflect on the global stage. So many musicians would rather log in or, or, or have their things copyrighted on the international level than do it locally. So it has been a major problem. And with these things, since they are not active, it affects our royalties or our returns on, on our creatives. Because if those things are not tracked well, how do you make your money back as a musician? Yes. Elsewhere in US or in Europe, songs have content IDs and they are publishers. So when when and they, they have sounds we have something we call a sound scan sound scan actually is like a, a virtual wave like a wave okay. that identifies your song wherever it's played so royalties actually accrued for you paid to you yeah yes and all these things are what makes the american musicians and the european musicians being billboard top 100 top 50 yes. whatever 
But we Human don't have... artists work so hard to they deserve Thank to you. be on such platform. Thank you, but we don't have these systems locally, so it's like your work is just going to the wind. There are a lot of young and even veteran Ghanaian writers who can't even put out their works because the system doesn't protect their, their books or their, their creative works. <laughs> it's sad. sad. It is sad. It's very sad. So that's where we are now. So the entertainment industry, tourism, all these need to come together and do something about this to put Ghana on the international platform level because we have so much talent, so much resources, and they're just going to waste. All comes back to the government. So if the government sees the need or the importance, the importance of these things, yes. they will tackle it from the top. Yes. You know, not to limit it to just Ghana, but African governments, they don't, for lack of a better word, they don't see the worth of the creative space. You can use the creative space to sell anything and market anything. Just last week, Assassin's Sound Clash between Stoneboy and Shatawali. Yes, it was supposed to crash that, COVID. That is equivalent to the verses that is going on Thank you. in America. And apart here, from that, organized apart, by from that we, apart from that, we have the numbers. Yes. We have the numbers even more than the politicians. Hmm. <laughs> so why are governments, successive governments, not making these things easy for us? Because if you're able to have a good royalty system for creatives, not just musicians, but poets, artisans, and we are able to sell our crafts to the world. You guys are collecting tax. There's mm -hmm. some revenue that comes to the government yes. as well. So it's benefiting as you well, too. Yes. Even, even me at my level, when I'm, when I'm working for people, clients, they deduct my taxes in, 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 in my pay. So how about those ones? I'm also paying government. So it comes back to feed the government. So if government takes a lot more critical attention and takes care of these needs, they will also be making money while I'm also making money. But when they turn a, a blind eye, I'm losing and they're also losing. I understand this is better because I happen to be in America and I realize we have a long way to go. When people say yeah. it doesn't make sense unless you experience it and you have traveled outside Ghana, you've been to other places. Recently, you were in Europe and uh, I'm sure you learned a few things and what can you say you wish we had back in our industry in Ghana, our music industry, entertainment industry? What did you see out there? You went to, I think, Germany. What other countries did you go? Can you mention them for me, please? Uh, I think Switzerland, Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium. Yeah. What did you see and wish, oh, I wish Ghana had this. I wish our industry had this. We would have done a lot of things. I think their, their, their system is more mechanized that less manpower is involved. So the way I have to struggle all the time and using all my manpower and all of that, the way I work here in Ghana, if I should match up to how I worked in Europe, I would have been achieving 500% results if I was there. Yes, because you work very hard. You work day and night, 24-7. I always have I to pause you and tell you, slow down. Have you slept yet? <laughs> I'm always checking even, to see whether you have had some rest. Even now, my eyes are still hazy. I can People, see that. Yeah, so that's, that's their system. Their system is, is more of less manpower. And they, 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 they did good. And their royalty system, copyrights, they don't joke with those things. Mm -hmm. Copyrights. So I think if those things were done here, it would have helped. Then the third big or biggest problem, the respect timelines. We, if we want to talk about time in Africa, we, we have yes. to take another 20 hours to talk about that. Time yes. alone, time management is yes. so, so bad. Yes. And I was raised in that culture of managing time badly. But with my travel experience, it has helped me and I'm, and I'm and I've improved a lot. Yes, you have. Though to. I, yeah, I've improved a lot, and it has helped me. Mm -hmm. Now I don't waste time on people anymore. My time is my time. If yeah. it's not working, that's it. Time is. If I try time. to, yes. Actually, when I went to Europe, I got to understand probably what they mean by time is money. It's very real. Time is money. You are it's, paid by the hour. 
Yeah. So if someone says, meet me at yeah. five o'clock, you have to be there yes. before five. Yes. Then yeah. Time start counting at five. So I've also adjusted. I go an hour yeah. before my appointment and I'm like, wow, this is me. I'm surprised. So our time management is bad. This interview, I've learned a lot. Our educational system needs to be revamped. Our syllabus is not right. The entertainment and tourism industry needs to be taken seriously so that we can match the international world. What has been one of your biggest achievements so far? Wow. That's a big question. I think, Put you on the spot. <laughs> I think I've not achieved that yet. Do you mind sharing what you want to be your biggest achievement? Maybe anybody you want to work with or what something big you want to change in the Ghana industry? Anything? Ah. Wow. This is, this is like the biggest question right now. Um, one on top of my head, mm -hmm. uh, I can try and list between three and five. That's fine. The first one, mm -hmm. I want to be a, a global bestseller. Nice. I want to hit that. You will. You work hard. You deserve it. Yes. The second one, which I think will be the most important for me in life, mm -hmm. I want I want to win a Nobel. From your mouth to his ears. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I want to win a Nobel for writing something very meaningful or creating a pack that is meaningful to humanity. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's the second one. The Third one, I don't know how, because I've moved away from that side of the industry for a long time. Okay. I don't know how, but I want to write um, a movie that will land me in the Oscars. I was going to ask if you want to write a script for a Hollywood one day, but you're in the right direction. Okay. Trust me, all my books I write, all my creatives, I always have a, a movie concept. That's so Love good. Malitis, yeah. my book Love Malitis has a movie concept. And I know, I'm not bragging, but I know that some movie producers might hit me sometime sooner or later to have that book as a movie. Yes. They and I know it will be, too. Yeah, it will be, it will be a very good one. Read. Yeah, it will be a very good script. Most of the books we read, yeah. uh, they can be converted into movies. Da Vinci Code. Um, yeah. What's the name of them? Grace. Uh, I can't remember the title, but most of the books can be converted into movies. And I'm glad you have these big dreams. Anything else you want to add? Four, five. You've mentioned three. So I, yeah, three, four. I'll be, I'll be glad to work with uh, two of my favorite, favorite musicians of all times, Demi Mali and Nas. I know you love I'll Nas. Love, mm -hmm. Yeah. I would, love, I would love to work with them sometime soon. The fifth achievement, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to lay down a, a legacy, a generational legacy that my, my child or my children can follow that footstep. And when I'm talking about this, I, I look at the Bob Marley dream. I want to leave a legacy like that. I think if if all these five happen for me, I'll I'll die smiling forever. Yeah. I think they'll all come true because I know you personally. I know how you work. Most people in the industry can vouch for you, and uh, you're working hard towards that, and you would achieve that. I strongly believe. I've always believed in you. I always say I'm proud of you. So it's nothing new anymore. What? Do you think we use the internet, social media well as Ghanaians? For gossip and trolls. That's what we use it for, right? Majority. Mm -hmm. It seems to be like the new, the new fashion, online fashion now. Yeah. Who is trolling who best or who is 
insulting who best or who is creating the the bigger mess. But else Sadly, people are using it. this to make money. People are using this to invent stuff. People are using this to teach. Locally, two people are using it to make money, but they are using it to make money by making other people look inferior. Okay, so that brings me to negative, uh, what do you guys call it? Public negative publicity. Yes. How do you handle that? You've been in this industry, you're always in the news for this and that. How do you handle negative publicity? People say both there's a recent one. are good, but you tell me. There's a recent one I'm, there's a recent one I'm handling. I'm trying. It's not, yes. it's not easy, but I'm trying. There was a leak sex tape that involved a Ghanaian musician and another lady in the US. She's a politician. That's oh, the latest one I'm, I'm that trying. Yet. Okay. So yes. how do you handle such? Uh, first Personally, of all, if you are in the news for something, how do you handle the publicity that comes along with that? First of all, you need to be extra, extra patient. That's the first step. Right. You need a lot of patience first before you make any move. Yeah, you don't just hear the news and jump on it and tweet or type it. It can, it can, it can be, it can be difficult sometimes because yeah. we all are different individuals and we handle situations differently. But your ability to be extra patient as the first step is even half solved the problem. Then number two. Like in my case involving that I have to do a PR for this leaked sex state. Mm -hmm. Number two, take your emotions out and affiliations out. Okay. And analyze the situation from all angles. So you put yourself in the shoes of the people who, who were involved in the leaked sex state. If it was me, how would I handle this? Mm -hmm then you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person who actually leaked the video to as well. So in analyzing all of these, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot more answers would have come to you. Then the third one, who are the necessary outfits to connect with to get some professional advice on how best to deal with this? Because in this case, it's a cyber crime. Yes. So you need to connect with the security people mm -hmm. and report the case and report it as it is. Don't exaggerate. Report it as it is. No matter how dirty or how nasty or crazy it looks, give them a fair detail of what exactly the situation is and they will advise you. Which, which uh, units, to be specific, do you go? Do you go to the police? Do we have a unit for cyberbullying and all that? Crime? Yeah, locally, 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 there's a cyber unit. So, you know, the criminal investigations department, because leaking somebody's sex state, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. actually criminal. So you need okay. to connect with the police and okay. tell them how everything happened. And you go wow. through processes of how best you can deal with it, whether you can pull it down or issue a rejoinder you know they advise you the best way you can deal with it wow yes so these are things that you need to do in in we are talking about this sex day situation issues. yeah I'm, I'm using it as an example so in any other incident in terms of bad publicity these are things that you need to do if it's somebody encroaching your farm or whatever mm -hmm. get in contact with the people who matter to that specific enterprise to get professional advice void of emotions even though we can't take emotions out of our lives but mm -hmm. void of emotions what are the necessary steps needed to be taken to make this materialize you can't clean a bad stuff forever it, mm -hmm. it will still be on people's minds people may not forget but yeah you can clean your image by presenting the reality and something better so that's that's how it is and just be real be real with yourself and don't be too hard on yourself too because no matter what somebody will still see you bad is your leaked sex tape they've seen xyz mm -hmm. they'll still be seeing you in that light but you don't have to let that overcome you the whole of your life life needs to move on okay. everyone has a cockroach everyone has a cockroach in their cupboard but 
since the world hasn't seen this, do you continue we'll looking talk about yours. like yeah. the angel? Yeah, so it's normal. It happens to all of us. And you just need to learn and move on. Yeah. So Before. we try. And bad publicity, people say, yo, uh, bad publicity is also good. Mm -hmm. Good? So there's a story about you saying you are a thief or you are a harlot. Mm -hmm. God forbid. Mm -hmm. You are a harlot. And you allow that to trend for five years, for 10 years. Now you have a daughter who grew up reading all of that about you. What are you trying to show them? So bad publicity is bad publicity. Okay. Let's, not use, let's not use beautiful words or whatever words to make it look like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, but there's an end game to it. To every action, there's a reaction or consequence. So that's it. People just want to trend. So whatever will make them trend, they don't really mind. But, but what it will come back and write to you. Yeah, but what are you trending for? Why exactly. are you trending? Exactly. What's the end game? Right. What's the end game? Before we wrap up, who do you wish to work with in Ghana that you haven't worked with yet? Music, industry, oh. educational, wow. whatever field. Who do you wish to work with someday and you haven't worked with yet? I'm open to anybody who wants to work with me when I'm available. Okay. I don't want to be choosy. Yeah. Okay. But I know yeah. you've met, you've worked with a lot of people already, so, and you're in the limelight. Most of, most of the people know where to find you. You have about 46,000 followers on Twitter. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> I was, I was even, I was even slow on that account. I, I left that account dormant for about four years before I go back, so. Yeah. I wish I had those four years added to <laughs> the ones I've served already. I know. Everything happens for a reason. This is the time it was meant to take off. So I think you're doing okay. Yeah. Final question before you go. How do you distress? Yoga. Meditation. Okay. okay. That's my first that's my first form of medicine before anything else. I before see. I even see my doctor. Yes. Nice. So I try to have, whilst having my me time, mm -hmm. I shut down myself with the whole world and have my, connect with myself and connect with my maker, connect with God through yoga. So, and do you do this every day best. or when you can? Almost. Almost. Even when I'm traveling and I'm very busy, I try to find, I can still be on the bus and still have my me time to meditate. Last and final question. How, what advice yeah. do you have for people in the industry, be it upcoming or those who are already in the industry? What one word can you say to somebody who comes to you who is already in the industry or trying to get into the industry? What one thing will you tell them? One word. Mm -hmm. Not one word. It could be a sentence. Oh, a sentence. More than a sentence, yeah. Okay. What tool will you Number give one. Them? that will help them to survive in that tough industry of yours? Number one, the first sentence. Mm -hmm. Know what you are doing, why you are doing it, and who you are doing it for. Deep. Number two, don't forget yourself and your health. Very important. Yes. I'm always the police on that end, checking on you and asking you, have you rested? Yeah. Have you slept? Yeah. There were many things I took for granted and I've paid bitterly for some of them. Mm -hmm. But now I've, I've been able to rewrite a lot of them and I'm still on that path. And I'm sure I'll, 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 I'll become better. Yeah. Especially the health aspect. I wasn't taking that serious i wasn't taking too much care of myself and when i had my fair share i had to slow down on a lot so that matters money money will come to you when when you keep putting in the effort but you need to take care of your health first before the Very world important. will come in you need to be alive to numbers, enjoy the money yeah numbers don't end numbers are infinity how much money can you make right 
I always say money is a means to a means, but money is not a means to every means. Mm -hmm. The necessary if money could buy life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if money Nobody could buy would life. Done. Sorry, but people like somebody like Steve Jobs would have still been alive. Right. No disrespect to him and his company, but money is not everything. Mm -hmm. Regardless. Yes, we need money. I need a lot of money, but we all do. at the end of the day, like I always say, <clears throat> like I, I, I was saying to myself earlier this morning that life deprives us naturally. Whether you are rich or you are poor, you are still deprived. Mm. Even, even Jay-Z wants more money. Apart from being a billionaire, he still wants more money. Even if it's not money, he still wants something. It could be comfort. It could be another place he wants to explore that he hasn't done yet. So we are all deprived, whether you are poor or you are rich. Yeah. We are all looking for something. I said before in my previous Thank video, you. we are all looking for something. Thank you. Some and that is some the beauty, and that is the beauty of life as well. And yeah. another way to take care of your deprivation is contentment. If you find contentment, what you have been derived of, you don't see it as a problem, but you see it as a fulfillment when it happens. So I think that's it. Thank you very much for coming on the show. If you want to continue, we'll go on and on. We have a lot of things to talk about, but I'm glad we touched on the major ones. We touched on very important points, and this is an eye-opener for me. I'm glad to have you here. His name is Elon Binin, big-time blogger in Ghana, based in Ghana. PR, author, publicist. I'm, run, I'm, run, I'm, running, I'm running away from the blogging aspect, more, so maybe... I know, you yeah. have a lot on your plate. The PR bit. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot on your plate, yeah, yeah. but I know you are handling them the right way. So thank you, and um, I'll see you on the other side. And they should follow me. They can Google me. They can type my name in Google, E-L-O-R-M for Elom, mm -hmm. B-E-E-N-Y-E -E for Bini, Elom Bini. I'm going to follow read. me on Instagram, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, everywhere. So when you just go on Google and you type my name, all my accounts will pop up. I'm going to leave your handle on so they're going to follow you as well. So tell your followers, your 47,000 followers or whatever they may be to also come check my YouTube page out. And uh, I think I'm doing something good and people are loving it so far. So I'm just a beginner, but we'll get there. Thank you for the encouragement. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. And I'm glad to have you. Let me leave you alone to go back to your busy schedule. Akwe now, Akwe.